हेलो एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर अभिनव गुप्ता मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर ऑफ मकीनो इंटरनेशनल हेल्थ केयर प्राइवेट लिमिटेड वी हैव चेन ऑफ फिजियोथेरेपी एंड रिहेबिलिटेशन सेंटर्स थ्रू आउट इंडिया टूडे वी विल गोइंग टू वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट रेस्पिरेटरी मैनेजमेंट एंड द प्रिवेंशन ऑफ सेकेंडरी कॉम्प्लिकेशन इन आईसीयू सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट इज अ क्रिटिकल केयर intensive care unit we are talking about so we must know that what is a critical care critical care is the specialized care of patients whose conditions are life threatening and who require comprehensive care and constant monitoring and usually these kind of patients are kept in icus critically ill patients frequently suffer long term physical and psychological complications they are on long term mechanical ventilation and as a result icu survivors have ongoing muscle weakness prolonged stay in icus are also associated with impaired quality of life functional decline increased morbidity mortality cost of care will be more and <laughs> there is there will be lengthy stay in the hospital premises therefore it is very important to have a multidisciplinary team approach to treat a patient who is in icu the team should be expert in assessment and management of respiratory complications physical deconditioning neuromuscular complications and musculoskeletal conditions now coming up to the physiotherapy and rehabilitation part physiotherapy and rehabilitation in icu includes the promotion of lung function reduces the incidence of ventilator associated pneumonia facilitates weaning promotes safe and early discharge from the icu now what are the common primary cardiopulmonary conditions or dysfunction that we face in icu that are respiratory failure heart failure cardiac surgeries and the thoracic surgeries other secondary complications or dysfunction that we encounter in icu are burns head injuries musculoskeletal traumas uh, neuromuscular dysfunctions uh, acute spinal cord injury renal failure or complicated general surgeries now if we talk about the goals goals of a physiotherapist what we need to do on a patient so first of all coming starting with the pulmonary goal our goal to maintain the pulmonary function so we have to improve and maintain normal or baseline ventilation and the oxygenation we have to clear the airway improve chest expansion maintain chest hygiene improve breathing sounds improve cough effectiveness and improve breathing pattern we have then coming up to the musculoskeletal system we have to improve the range of motion improve muscle strength and endurance of the patient and we have to prevent the contractures and the joint deformities if we talk about the cardiopulmonary system we have to prevent dvt and the swelling then we have to improve and maintain the neurological system and the cognitive status of the patient and also to improve the functional status as per the patient tolerance now in icu we encounter two kind of patients either they are intubated or extubated then further div dividing the intubated patients into two categories unconscious and the conscious then again extubated patient in two categories one is unconscious and one is conscious with extubation now what are the common points to remember while working in a icu these are the most important points whether icu technician physiotherapist doctor or a nurse everyone should know this monitor physiological responses such as heart rate blood pressure respiratory rate and the oxygen saturation the physiotherapist should be aware of effect of positioning and mobility of the patients on various monitoring devices the physiotherapist should always deal with the patient in a same way whether the patient is conscious or not if the patient is not conscious then even it is recommended to talk to the patient while doing the treatment to make the patient more relaxed and comfortable the frequency 
and uh, intensity of the treatment session should be determined as per the patient condition but should generally be twice a day <coughs> treatment should be carried out one to half an hour with the feeding time so it should be after around one and a half hour after the patient takes his feed the physical therapist or physiotherapist must be aware of the patient medication what medications have been given to the patient what are the adverse effects of that medication and should also take the family concerns and everything into consideration and the most important thing is the physiotherapist should be familiar with the icu equipments now coming up to the after the assessment thorough assessment of the patient will look for everything as i have told you that what are the equipments being used on patient what are the medications given to the patient what is the diagnosis what are the test we have gone through and after the thorough assessment we will move to the com uh, uh, complete physiotherapy management of the patient the physiotherapy management for the patient in icu should be customized as per the requirement and the need of the patient now coming up to the pulmonary system if we going to uh, we are going to start our treatment with the pulmonary system so taking that intubated patient into consideration what is intubation intubation is patient must be having a endotracheal tube or tracheostomy done so if the patient is intubated and unconscious so the patient should be pre treated with bronchodilators if the patient present with bronchospasm and it should be treated bronchodilators should be given around 20 minutes before the treatment modified uh, this uh, postural drainage positions can be used usually with the head of the bed flat unless uh, patient uh, has a increase in intracranial pressure above 30 mmhg the head should be kept 30 degrees if there are no other contraindications then the patient can be turned to both the sides the postural drainage positions can be implemented the uh, suctioning can be performed with the use of ambu bag to safe uh, to hyper oxygenate the patient then endotracheal uh, uh, endotracheal suctioning to uh, clear retained secretions and sterile techniques can be done other things what we can go for is Uh, to decrease dyspnea to improve ventilation oxygenation the head of the bed should be elevated to 30 degree and prone position if comfortable for the patient is the best position to remove lung secretions now coming up to the conscious intubated patients the patient is conscious now so what we can do is we should incorporate the independent effort of the patient for breathing and the coughing coordinate with the upper extremities of the patient for better strengthening as well as to improve the lung expansion while expirating then if we come to the another category that is the extubated patient if the patient is extubated but unconscious then again if the the head should be elevated to 30 degrees if the patient is having no uh, contraindications as such then pulmonary hygiene techniques to mobilize secretions can be done your mechanical vibration manual percussion shaking many of the techniques can be given the whole and sole result of these techniques or the goal of these techniques is to move the distal accumulation accumulated cuff to the central airways for the removal then use of neuro neurophysiological facilitation techniques can be there that is the pnf techniques for respiration then deep breathing can be incorporated but the patient is unconscious so deep breathing can be incorporated through the facilitation facilitation of chest neuro facilitation techniques then use of tracheal tickle techniques have shown good results to elicit cuff then clear retained secretions it is very important to hyperventilate or hyper oxygenate the patient while planning for suctioning side lying or prone positions are the best position to improve oxygenation and the ventilation then 
coming up to the fourth category that is the extubated patient in a conscious state modified postural drainage positions are used you head is usually kept again uh, at uh, 30 degrees this uh, and uh, even teach the patient effective cuffing huffing techniques percussion and mechanical vibration should be carried out then effective breathing exercises should be told to the patient pulse grip breathing glossopharyngeal breathing uh, air shift maneuver should be taught to the patient depending on the condition and the requirement of the patient as if we talk about if we take an example of a patient with copd and we need to suction the patient first we need to hyperoxygenate hyperventilate the patient to prevent the collapse during suctioning and then we should incorporate deep breathing exercises segmental breathing exercises thor thoracic expansion exercises and multiple exercises to rehabilitate the patient if we talk about the patient with respiratory failure and the respiratory muscles are paralyzed then we can go for training of accessories muscle like air shift maneuvers can be performed glossopharyngeal breathing can be performed now coming up to the another system that is our musculoskeletal system now again in musculoskeletal system we will categorize the patient in an unconscious patient and another one is conscious patient if the patient is unconscious we have uh, recently discussed that we will see whether the patient is intubated or extubated and go for pulmonary rehabilitation accordingly now if the patient is unconscious what we need to do in for the musculoskeletal system so to avoid uh, our goal is to avoid the contractures and the deformities and to concentrate on the passive range of motion exercises of upper and lower extremities we can recommend the use of splints so that most of the joints can be kept in neutral position shoes can be used to multipodal shoes can be used to prevent uh, the foot drop and uh, other splints can be used for appropriate positioning of the joints now coming up to the our second category that is the conscious patient so what we can go for is we can incorporate active or as active assisted range of motion exercises of the upper and the lower extremities and mild strengthening exercises with resistant resistance progressing resistance we can go for then another system we will talk about is our circulatory system that is if the patient is unconscious the goal is to prevent dvt and the swelling and we have to concentrate on passive range of motion exercises use of crab bandages use of dvt compression pump or limb elevation can be incorporated then we talk about a patient who is conscious and what we will look for in a circulatory system we can use ice pack to decrease swelling we can encourage encourage active range of motion exercises again it will be a coordinated uh, pattern it will be in a coordinated pattern and we have to look for each and every system whether it is circulatory system musculoskeletal system pulmonary system or the neurological system this was uh, it for today's uh, session about icu management for any query feedback or problem you can coordinate us at healthcare makino at the rate of gmail.com or you can share and subscribe our channel on youtube that is makino care thank you